Well, good evening. Um, I want to share with you just a couple of scriptures tonight and, and hopefully successfully make a connection between those two passages that maybe aren't two passages that you have associated with one another before. If I said all that right. Um, turn first to um, Genesis 1. And you know well, I presume, what is taking place in Genesis chapter 1. We have the story of creation, and specifically of the six days of creation, where God um, goes through the process of creating everything that uh, we see in the physical world around us. And so there's a, there's a progression there of starting off with the the very elemental, the very very basic things, and kind of working his way up into the most uh, complex and the most um, significant things. And as God makes that progression through creation, um, he reaches a point on day six where he is almost done. In fact, in verse 24, it says, then then God said, this is the, the beginning of the sixth day, then God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures after their kind, cattle and creeping things and beasts of the earth after their kind, and it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after their kind and the cattle after their kind and everything that creeps on the ground after its kind, and God saw that it was good. And so God is, is done, except for one thing. And it's not a spoiler here, you know what that one thing is that he has left to do, he has yet to create man. And so kind of the, the climactic part of, of Genesis chapter 1 happens there in verse 26 and 27, and it says, then God said, let us make man in our image, <clears throat> according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the sky, and over the cattle, and over the, all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. And God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And so here, as to put a, an exclamation point, if you will, on creation, or as, so as to put a, a kind of a final stamp of this really is what creation was all about. All of the things that have taken place in the, the previous six days of creation, all of the things that were made up to this point were made in preparation of this one thing, this this thing that God had yet to make, and it was to make man. And, and there was something here that God does that is special in his creative efforts and his creative works, as recorded in Genesis there. He pauses during the act of creation. We don't read about him doing that on any of the other days. He doesn't get partway you know, through making the, the sun and the moon and the stars and then say, you know, let's take a break here and let's talk about what we're doing and make sure that this next step that we take in creating the sun and the moon and the planets uh, make sure that that next step is right. Make sure that that next step is exactly how we want it to be. Uh, but he does that on day six. There's a, there's a clear delineation in the creative effort on day six um, between the creation of the creeping things and the beasts and the cattle. And then there's a pause. And God says, now let's finish. Let's, let's bring it home. Let's Let's do the final thing that we've set out to do and let's pause for a moment to consider what it is we're about to do so that we do it correctly. Not that there was any error in what he had done up to that point. Everything up to that point has been declared good, it, which means it meets the purpose for which it was created. It was functioning as it should function, functioning as God intended it to function. And so everything up to that point was right, but God pauses so that he can give special consideration to what happens next. And he says, let us make man in our image. There's something special about the design and the function of mankind that is different than the design and the function of everything else that has been created up to that point. And we recognize this as being a spiritual difference. There's not a, uh, you know, I don't think what God here is talking about in this, in this moment as he's thinking about the design features of the human being, that he is really thinking about physical things, but rather he is thinking about 
the spiritual nature of man. As we've been uh, fond of saying over the last uh, couple of years, as we've been studying through some some topics, you know, man is we're not um, bodies with a soul, but rather we're souls with a body. And God is taking special consideration, I think, of of what He does next to make sure that the house that He creates in which he is going to st- uh, install a soul, breathe into it a soul, that that, uh, that that part is done just right so that it reflects his nature in a way that nothing else has reflected up to that point. And so it is this idea of being created in God's image that really uh, becomes the central focus of, uh, of who man is and what his purpose on this planet is. Um, and even to the point that people today who don't believe in a God or don't think there is anything, you know, to the idea of creation, but, but believe solely in evolution, they still talk about, you know, why are we here? What purpose do we serve as human beings? Why have we reached in their vernacular? Why have we reached this, you know, ultimate level of evolution that we've reached? Uh, why are we different than the animals? Why are we different than, than those animals that don't have self-awareness, that not, aren't able to think about that question? You know, you don't, a dog doesn't wonder, why am I here? Uh, a monkey doesn't think, you know, what is my purpose in this life? But people do. And that's what God has put in us. Um, the, uh, Solomon phrased it this way in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Verse 11, he says, he has made everything appropriate in his time. He has also set eternity in their heart so that man will not uh, find out the work with which God, uh, God has done from the beginning even to the end. He has set eternity in their heart. He's given them the capacity and the ability and the desire to, to wonder, to think about why am I here? What, what is my purpose in this life? God instilled that within us. He designed it within us so that it would be a driving force, a mechanism within our very being that would push us to seek him, that would push us to seek a higher purpose. And of course, he is the ultimate higher purpose. And so God has done that for us. But why? Well, he's done it because he wants us to seek him. He wants us to be in a relationship with him. And so he, he puts it in us to, to drive us toward him so that we can seek that relationship with him so it's interesting that God makes us in his image for a a specific purpose of of giving us a reason and a desire to draw nearer and nearer to him and so that's our, our first passage to consider tonight Genesis 1 verses 26 and 27 that God made us like him so that we could seek him out so that we could try to be like him in every way that we possibly can now the other passage that i want us to think about is in philippians chapter 2 philippians chapter 2 beginning in verse 5 Paul there writes, have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking on the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men. Now think about the position that Jesus finds himself in here, that all the way back in Genesis 1, Jesus is part of that triune God, that, that trinity that is there conferring with one another on day six of creation. They've been actively involved. All three parts of the Godhead are actively involved in creation in some form or another. And, and they pause on day six to step back from creation and say, let's think about this for a minute. We're about to make our final, uh, our final addition to the earth's population by creating man and we want to we want to step back and do it right and so we talk about it first and now time has elapsed and now jesus is saying i need to go down and be like them we made them like us to drive them to seek us to to give them a purpose to give them a spirit to give them a soul to give them a desire to understand who we are and you know what 
that wasn't enough. It wasn't enough because they're not doing it very well. They're not getting a handle on it. They haven't figured out what the purpose is and what the true meaning of what it is to be a person that we've designed really is. And so now we've created them to be like us, but we really haven't shown them how to do it. And so I need to go down and be like them to show them what it means, to show them what it's like to be the person we designed them to be. And so Jesus took on our form after giving us his form, after creating us with his image, with his likeness. He comes down and takes on our form to show us how to do it. And it's, inter- it's always been interesting to me, the, the word, wording here in Philippians chapter 2, it says he emptied himself, you know, he gave up all of the glory of heaven, he gave up his station, he gave up his throne, he gave up his position, he gave up his, his right to be worshipped, to be called the creator, to be called God. And he came down and called himself a man. It says he emptied himself taking on the form and i think now we are talking about the physical in genesis chapter one and when it says let us make him in our image i don't think that's physical i think that's spiritual but here in philippians chapter two when it says that jesus emptied himself he gave up his spiritual form he gave up his spiritual spiritual likeness and he came down to be formed physically like we are to be confined within a body like ours and it says that form is what it's the form of a bond servant when god was creating us physically he had in mind to create a servant not that he was creating a, an army of servants for us to be mindless robots that were going to go about and do his will not that at all but He was creating people who were designed to serve because we need to take care of one another. There are lots of people that need our help. There are lots of people that need us to take care of them in this life. And so God said, what would that physical form represent? What would it best look like if I created someone who was designed to serve other peoples? And these bodies is what he came up with. We are designed, made, physically formed to be servants. And when we are not serving, we are rejecting the form that God has given us. Jesus came to this world to be formed like we are, to take on the bodies that we have, to show us how to be the servants that he designed us to be from the very beginning. And so when we do things like Second Sunday Servants, and it sounds kind of gimmicky, it sounds kind of, you know, it's a, a, a neat little, alliter- I can't even say it, alliterative name that just helps us remember, you know, oh yeah, it's the Second Sunday, so we've got something special going on tonight. It's not a gimmick. It's what we were made to do. It's what we were designed for. It's who God intended us to be. And so when we have other opportunities, a yard that needs cleaned up or, or somebody's deck that needs rebuilt or a house that needs uh, a new roof on it or, or windows that need washed or light bulbs that need changed or the list goes on and on and on. But when those things need to be done, who needs to do it? Well, it's the people that God designed with a physical form to be servants of other people. And it's the people that recognize that he came down to take on our form to show us how best to serve other people. That's what we're here for, not just tonight, but it's what we're here for every day. We're here to be servants and uh, we need to recognize that that's what God created us for, and that's what he came here to show us how to do. So uh, we always close out with an invitation, and, and if you have any need tonight, would like to bring that before the congregation, this is an opportunity for you to do that. 
If you uh, have any desire, would you come while we stand and sing?